Hello, uh, welcome back to the final episode of Wu Diamond Retrospective. We have looked back upon everything Blue Diamond has done in the past 10 years. Uh, starting with, uh, you know, Price of Loyalty, everything back in 2007, all the way through Phase 1 with Reflection of the Soul in 2013, and then all of Phase 2, and then everything that we uh, never um, managed to do or got cancelled. So now it's time to talk about the last thing, the future. Talk about what uh, is planned for Phase 3 and beyond that. So, uh, here we go. Enjoy this final episode. So, what can I say about Phase 3? I want it to be good. Um, I don't know how long it'll go because, you know, eventually I'll finish up all of schooling and probably move out of state. And then that'll pretty much be the end of Blue Diamond, probably. I mean, I can may I, I doubt if I'll be able to do anything beyond that. We'll see. Um, but that'll be cross that bridge when I come to it. But right now, what I want to do in the next couple of years, what do I want to accomplish in the, by 2020, basically? What do I want to accomplish by 2020? Um, well, the final cut. I really do want to make one last film, finish up the trilogy with George, uh, finish his story. Uh, though the final cut, uh, what I can say about the film is he won't have the starring role. Um, George is not the star of the film. Uh, I actually want a female-led film for once. Um, George shows up in the story um, in sort of a mentor role, and that's really what I want. It's kind of the flip for him to be the mentor, so if everyone always telling him, you know, you know, kind of get a grip, <laughs> you know, it's kind of his turn. Uh, but you know, I want it to be the kind of the passing of the torch, which kind of is what's slowly starting to happen with Blue Diamond. Uh, because we're finally reaching kind of almost an end point uh, here. Um, so we've revived uh, the Lost Scene series. I want to finish it. I don't want to see it not be finished. I can finally say I don't. I hated the idea of canceling it. Now, canceling things like Doctor Who, that's fine. It gets kind of a standalone. But, I mean, this was part of a movie series. I really want to see it through to the end. Uh, so we're incorporating the... Uh, student film choices is now going to be part of that series. Uh, it's going to introduce a character that's going to be part of Lost Scene 4. Um, the Lost Scene 5 is more of a standalone, so if it's never made, that's okay. If for some reason I'm not, I'm not able to get to the Lost Scene 5 Redemption, that's fine because it, it's kind of more of an epilogue rather than a conclusion. 4 is really the big finale. Whereas five's kind of an epilogue, so it's not. You, so you don't have to think, oh, it's a cliffhanger ending. I wonder what happened. Unlike three, where you know you wonder, you know, what's the conclusion? You know, with all scene four, five is more of just a footnote. It's just an end point. It's just one final adventure for. I'd like it to, I'd like the Lost Scene 4 to launch the, um, the Legends audio drama. I still really would love to do that with a bunch of the YouTube filmmakers, so I'm wanting to get a lot of, like, cameos and references to a lot of them, so we can really set up this universe, which could then lead to various people crossing over into various films, which I think would be cool to do. Really, I want the Lost Scene 4 to be the one that truly launches that, um, that universe. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Once I get the Lost Scene 4 going, we'll, uh, figure out what happens with the Legends in there and also the Lost Scene 5. But, you know, Choices should come out. The full version should come out this year. I hope to get the Lost Scene 4 out by next year and then the Lost Scene 5 maybe by 2020. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot else. Uh, Rough Justice, the spinoff of the, of the, the Martial Law Trilogy. Uh, I'd like to make it a trilogy of films, but I doubt if I'll have enough time. I'll bet I'll be done with school and stuff before then. But I'd at least like to set up at least one film and at least leave it where it has room for more films. And if we're not able to make the other films, then oh well. 
it happens, but I'd like to at least make one spinoff. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. And if we can pull it off, I think it'd be an enjoyable film. Uh, with a couple of the characters introduced in Martial Law 3 leading the way on that. Um, I guess the only other project that is definitely on our horizon right now. And it's uh, really cool to uh, announce this. I, um, I originally had given it to someone else, but then I asked them about it. And I told them I could write them a different script. And they have given me back the film. Death is forever. Da -da -da -da. We have got back Death is Forever. I would like to actually do this. Um, perhaps as legitimately the final film of Blue Diamond. You know, it could be the last one that comes out in like 2020. I'd like to do it maybe as the final farewell film that Blue Diamond makes. One last bomb film. I know I said I wasn't going to do it. I know there, in 2017 it really looked like there was no chance. The same with Lost Scene 4, stuff like that. But, man, you fans. I mean, I, I, I never realized how much people really, really, really wanted me to do a fourth film. I mean, I'm like, most people say they can't do another film. That's just like, oh, well, sorry. You know, it's a shame you can't make another one. But, man, people have been asking me constantly. Please make this fourth film. Make Death is Forever. Please don't cancel it. I really don't want to disappoint you guys. Uh, you guys are amazing. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll do it. We'll we'll, we'll do it. We'll we'll. I don't know how good it will be. Um, we're gonna put everything we can into it. And as I said, it could legitimately be Blue Diamond's last film. Uh, but I would like it with. Um, Probably a 2020 release, maybe 2019. Uh, depends on when we get started with it and how fast we can move along with it. I've got some other scripts being written, so just so you guys know, I'm you know definitely interested in doing other scripts and for people and uh, cameos, of course. So that is the look of the future of maybe Phase Three, which could end up being the final phase and end of Blue Diamond. Which would be nice. I mean, if we end in 2020, I mean, that's like a that's a 13 year run of Wudan Productions. That's pretty darn good, uh, I think, uh, for what we are. Um, but, you know, it just might legitimately be, you know, if I move, that's it. Unless I gain enough friends wherever I move to to make more films, but that'll take time. So it definitely would be a gap. So it definitely would be um, phase four. <laughs> If I move, I will be starting up phase four, if there is a phase four. So just so you guys are aware, it could end at by 2020. It could be over, all over. So let's just enjoy these last three years, I say. Uh, let's give it all we got. Those are the uh, planned projects right now. If something else comes up, you know, I've got several other people that could come up with short films that we could film in a day or two that might pop up. But those are the major projects I want to do. Uh, and I'm working on the scripts for. Um, so, without further ado, I would like to make a shout out to all of you, you fans who have been with us um, however long. I mean, to the fans that have been with us since the Price of Loyalty, thank you for sticking out with us, for uh, watching our films, for supporting us through everything we've done through the you know, getting the Shower of Revenge out because it took so long, the dry period between Shower of Revenge and the lost scene after the incident in 2011, after everything slowed down in 2012, uh, after, you know, phase one was phase two started and it was just class projects and we weren't making much and now we re re the most recently through this uh, 2017 uh, another dry spell uh, Thank you all for supporting us uh, This has been a journey really uh, <laughs> I mean I started out I was 17 years old when we started I Literally just turned 17 When I first started blue diamond and now here I am 28 and I've grown up In a lot of ways throughout these movies, so Thank you so much for what you've 
you guys have done. You've supported us. You've you've watched us throughout these films. Uh, you've given us good critiques on what we can improve on. You've watched us have to improve through technology. You've watched us through three different kind of cameras, audio equipment, you know, everything. Um, yeah, I've filmed yeah with like actually considering also the class stuff I've done. I've filmed with like. A total of like five or six different cameras. Yeah, I filmed with the old camcorders, then the little camcorders, then the T5i. I filmed with the red M1. Uh, I filmed with the red Scarlet with Drive U. Uh, filmed with a uh, Canon uh, T1, T1, uh, C100. The C100 and then also the Ursa for uh, Monopoly. Uh, so yeah, I've gone through a lot of cameras. Uh, of course, we've had all the audio equipment we've gone through uh it's just so many different projects i i don't even actually know the number of films we've done and of course you know the whole survivor series um but yeah thank you all so much uh from all of us at blue diamond uh i want to also make a shout out to everyone who's been part of blue diamond sean phillips chris mooney richard smith uh, Sean Mooney, Brian Mooney, Lisa Limbach, Todd Alexander, Scott Alexander, especially shout outs for all of you. Yeah, Amanda, I think I'm saying Amanda Ellison as well. Yeah, a shout out to all of you because you all were there in that very first film. Even though we weren't even sure if we were be able to finish it, make it, you guys stuck out with us. And of course, everyone who was involved in like the Shadow Revenge, you know, Gordon Phillips, Alva Black. Um, David Laughlin, everyone who was involved in that. There's a lot of names. Of course, you know, Otto Nilsson doing a fantastic job with the music. Um, Martin Groff, uh, Matthew Wood, uh, Ryan Fletcher. Um, everyone who's done visual effects for us, thank you. Um, like, Mateo, uh, Benny, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, bad. That's why I'm avoiding saying some names because I don't want to say I'm really bad. Uh, but yeah, everyone who's just supported us, uh, Paul Cusack, um, uh, Alex Cameron, everybody who's just been a huge fans of ours, um, you guys just uh, are amazing. Um, Luke Richards, uh, I could name a bunch of names. If I don't name you, I'm sorry. There's just a million names going through my head right now. I'm just so happy for everything as looking doing this series was really good for me uh because just being able to look back and think about all that i accomplished everything that we accomplished as well uh, as a team i mean yeah i came up with the idea me and chris came up with the idea of blue diamond but to see it 10 years later and just realize what we managed to accomplish when all it started out was just two guys thinking with a camera we could make a movie and make a silly movie and now here we are, you know, 10 years later, and I keep getting people messaging me saying, hey, you inspired me to make my own movies. Every time I hear that, that one really always gets me a little warm and fuzzy inside. It's like, wow, wow, I really did do something. So, you know, it's just those kinds of moments. Uh, I cherish those type of moments. But, yeah, everyone that's contacted and got a hold of us, I mean, I have been able to start friendships because of these films like Jake Riley, big fan of ours, right from the price of it, has become one of my best friends because of that movie. So, you know, and he's always supported our film, so shout out to you and thanks for helping out with um, what you leave behind because that film was uh, crazy. And of course, everyone that hung out like the War Survivor Wars End, uh, you know, like Tyler Malloy, Matthew Copeland, Mark Bollinger, everyone, Adam Deer King, who played fantastic villain to a good friend to a survivor. He's played a million roles. So many great people have been involved in this. I could go on and on and just make this the longest boot on retrospective. And I need to print up a list of just every name I could name. People who have been either involved in the projects or helped out uh, behind the scenes or just plain... Um, you know, supported us, just always said good job, and always gave us good comments, likes, favorites, shares, um, 
thank you all so much. I mean, we made 2 million views on Shower Revenge before YouTube decided to be dumb and take it down. I mean, 2 million views. It blows my mind. We were close on 3. We were closing in on 3, too. Um, and, of course, like, Patrick Stark, you know, for letting us work with the martial law. That was a fantastic opportunity to do something of that scale. Um, make some of our longest projects ever. Um... You know, and everyone who suggested uh, story ideas to us and just really supported us. Uh, I, I know I keep saying this, but man, I so mean this. Thank you so much for uh, helping us. It really, it really means a lot. And now, I guess this ends the retrospective. Uh, we'll do one more look back right at the very end. Of course, I will do a look back. Probably be more like one video, just kind of looking back, and of course saying thank you. And that one, I might actually print up a list and say thank you to everyone much more properly. Uh, yeah, all the way back. Uh, I don't know who it was. I don't know who you are. <laughs> uh, I don't even remember the YouTube username now, but it's there somewhere on the uh, price loyalty. Uh, trailer, the very first trailer, I think came out in like May 28th, something like that. I'm looking forward to when that comes, you know, the 10th anniversary of Boot Diamond Director, because I made the channel at the same day I uploaded the video. Uh, whoever made that first comment on the video, I remember I was so happy to see a comment. I think the comment was like, looks great guys. I think that was it. But whoever that was, if you're still watching us, thank you. Uh, for starting the ball rolling on that because I was so happy. I was like, I got a comment! I got one comment! <laughs> now here I am. It's like, time goes. Uh, yeah, 10 years. Um, I want to do uh, some anniversary trailers, uh, do some like compilation trailers, do a trailer for all the Bond films together, the computer network and the uh, real business together. The class projects all together, the, um, of course, martial law all together, um, the survivor all together. I want to make a couple of trailers and then basically one that's just kind of end the rest. Uh, just some 10th anniversary trailers. I'll probably be the next big project I do uh, while I'm busy writing scripts for what's going to be phase three. So, once again, thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting Blue Diamond. And thank you for everyone who's helped us. We appreciate you. We love you guys. You're the best, best fans I could hope for. And, uh, you know, thinking about all this and everything that we've gone through in the last 10 years and all the people that's helped, all the fans, uh, probably a little bit of language here, but I'm quoting, uh, to quote the end, one of the end lines, one of the last lines from the TV show uh, Cheers, what uh, Sam Malone, the dancing character, says is very end. I am the luckiest son of a bitch on earth. Yeah, that's how I feel right now. I'm very lucky, I'm very Smith signing off at the very end of Budan Retrospective. Thank you all for watching. Take care. <laughs>